All right, everybody, we have our early read on last month's consumer spending ahead of the government's own numbers. Our senior economics reporter, Steve Leisman, joins us right now with the CNBC NRF retail monitor. Looking forward to hearing this. What'd you Here think? we go. Consumers, Becky, continued moderately strong spending in March spending. That looks even better when you consider that inflation, the consumer side of inflation, is flat and even negative when it comes to goods. The CNBC NRF retail monitor, we get real credit card spending data from Affinity Solutions. It shows retail sales, X autos and gas. That's our headline number up 0.4 percent. That compares with a 0.4 percent gain in February. Uh, year over year remains the same at 2.7. And then do core retail, which takes out restaurants. And we're 0.2 versus 0.3. But don't get too excited because it's 0.23 versus 0.27. That rounding is not that big a deal. I'm calling it a wash. Um, but the year-over-year uh, -year did tick down. Still a strong number, 2.9% versus 3% in February. Take a look at the history. Considerable volatility over the past several months. But spending has now bounced back into positive territory for two months in a row now. After that January decline, people thought maybe that January decline was the beginning of this long-awaited consumer slowdown. Well, we're still waiting for that, as you might imagine, Becky. Uh, looking ahead now um, at the sectoral breakdown, we have a pretty much even uh, uh, split here. Three up, three down. Um, total six up, six down. But the non-store retailers, that's your internet, up 2.5%. That's strong. Food and beverage, that's strong, up 1.2. Sporting goods and hobbies, good to see that sector up strong. That's a completely or almost completely discretionary topic. But there's all your home-related stuff, furniture and home furnishings. Building and garden supplies both down in a big way in the month of, uh, hmm. of March. Um, electronics and appliances down 2.3%. It's interesting. You had a big decline in prices for both of those. Appliances could be related to a weak housing market. Electronics could be related to just some deflation on televisions and that kind of stuff. All right. Despite higher overall inflation, goods inflation, you can see here, has been flat to negative in eight of the past 12 months. You might have missed this when you were blinded, perhaps, by the, 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 the uh, shining light of higher inflation numbers. But the goods part actually has been flat or negative. Consumers are looking for value, and there's a competitive market out there, says the NRF, bristling at the idea that there's price gouging going on by retailers. But this could also mean something to think about possible margin pressure depending upon what's happening with the input costs and the labor costs. We get a piece of the input cost today. We get import prices at 830 this morning. Yesterday's wholesale price report suggested only modest price pressure for those input costs. This is the six-month anniversary of our CNBC NRF index. And here's how it looks relative to the census data. I'm going to say this looks um, relative to the data generally tracking it a bit more stable. Of course, we don't have to revise this data because we're using real data on the inputs from credit cards. We get the um, census guys on Monday, the retail sales report, um, and this number here is in line with where the consensus is on the census retail data. Okay, I want to take this and add it to what we heard earlier this week from the Bank of America Institute. Okay. Because they actually saw spending up for the month of March. I think it was a gain uh, on households because they're looking at real households too. They have something yeah. like 69 million households and small businesses that they're watching. Um, Consumer card spending per household up 0.3 percent year over year in March, but that was boosted because the early year over year or month to month 0.3 year over year three up 0.3 percent following a leap year that was boosted by 2.9 percent. So they saw real big numbers in March, okay. February because of the leap. I year. think if there's 2.9, is that relative to three or two point? I'm looking at the numbers okay. right here. All right, um, up 0.3 percent year over year in March, uh, but when you adjusted it. You know what, though? It says year over year, but I bet you're right. I bet it's month it's over month. It's got to be month over month. The decline when they adjusted. I, I want to interrupt you real quick. They had conniptions, to use the Yiddish phrase, with the leap year. Right. Yeah. We, it's terrible. It's but hardly it's hard just, to do. You can't adjust it's it. It's not just the leap year, but right. then you had Easter that got pulled into March, and that maybe pulled from April. Did you so ever say, see the algorithm for Easter? Adjusted, it was actually numbers that were down. Yeah. If you seasonally. It's hard. Down. What we did, I, I'm glad you asked this, Becky. Another brilliant question. Um, first of all, leap year gave us terrible fits last, last month. We actually pulled the data back before we published it to go over it one more time because one extra day on 30 days is, is a big That's number. Real. Yeah. What we did with this comparison, and thanks to Matt Shea, who's a really smart economist at the NRF, who I work with on this stuff. Um, not Matt Shea, sorry. Um, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Matt is his first name, but I'll get it. His last name. No, Matt Shea is the president. Oh, yeah. Uh, the economist I work with. I'm just oh. having a, a senior moment here. But um, what we did is, for this comparison purposes, we threw out the 29th day. 
okay. to compare March to February, okay? And the February game for this purposes. But we did, they, if you remember. You have Easter that gets pulled into March, which makes March on the year over year look weirder, too. It does, except for I do believe that the X11 seasonal adjustment software program, mm -hmm. I think it takes care of that. Okay. I think it does. Okay. But these are squirrely moments here for the retail index. Right now, I'm seeing 0 04 versus 0 04. Looks pretty good to me. I saw um, the split between six up and six down in the sectors and the categories with a lot of that weakness associated with housing. That makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. I still see a good amount of discretionary spending going on. What I think matters here is we're my overall take on the economy right now is there are a lot of risks out there, but not a lot of evident weaknesses. Risks become weaknesses. So I'm, I'm worried about that we have the risk of the consumer slowing down. Right. I don't see the weakness of the consumer slowdown. Because we have been looking for this for, a very, how long? Long <laughs> for a very long a very, time. A very long time. And I've so get you. They've been all, all such concerns to this point.